In studio with the mogul, Delegate Mike Hornby. Morning, Michael. Good morning, Rob. Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney and West Virginia First Foundation Chairman Matt Harvey. Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. I like that. I like that new title. You're welcome. Do you know what the best title I have? Dad. Dad. That's always it. Dad. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Dad's a good one. Until she te- turns into a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> Hornby's going through that right now. I've already graduated from that, so is Gilstrap. Yeah, yeah. The change is, is unbelievable. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Also, New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap Good and morning. also author of the 409 words you shouldn't write in a book or say on the radio. There you go. We're trimming that list down as we go along. Via telephone, Zach Shrewsbury is a candidate for U.S. Senate on the Democrat side. As we all know, Senator Joe Manchin made the decision to not run for re-election as a uh, U.S. senator is mauling over the possibility of a third-party option uh, for the presidency. Zach, good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Hey, thank you so much for having me on. And just uh, to get the technicality part of it out of the way, you filed to run before Senator Manchin had made the decision to not run for re-election, correct? That is correct. Uh, we filed on October 15th, um, and I announced uh, all the way up in Charlestown. I filed with the FEC then, and then, yeah. And then it's been 100 miles now ever since. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So you, you had made the decision at that time to take on Senator Manchin in a primary. Why did you decide to do that? Because frankly, the reason why I decided to run is because I don't believe in our federal government we have enough working class representation um, speaking for people. You know, I've been in the communities for a few years now talking to West Virginians all over the place. It doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat. And it's been – it. We, we don't have our voices amplified. You know, we don't oh, – so many people would want to be heard, and it doesn't seem like we have that representation. You know, so many people are asking for help. They want to see things change, and nothing in our federal government seems to be taking those voices up. So I said I will. Tell us a bit about your background, Zach. I know you served in the Marine Corps. Yeah, so I did five years in the Marine Corps, uh, two and a half on a fleet anti-terrorism security team. The other two and a half was regular infantry. Um, I got as a sergeant, made some uh, very lifelong friends. Love those guys. Um, Once I got out, uh, did a few odd jobs. Um, Once I moved back to West Virginia, I, like I said, saw my community. Um, It was in worse shape than it was when I left, and I I dived in. I just dived in trying to find find areas where I could help uh, people um, have better lives. You know, I dived in feeding the homeless, um, you know, uh, grabbing soup for them, getting uh, warming layers for them, as in, you know, toboggans, gloves, coats for the winter. That led me to doing Narcan trains, the addiction crisis, then all the way to different legislation. So, I'm, but I'm always, like I said, I'm always delivering water to Minton. So my biggest thing is always trying to help communities and find the issues here that people don't seem to be hearing and get this out there so that elected officials know what's going on and they can act on it. I know in reading about you, you uh, know a little bit about Monroe County area. Our co-host Matt Harvey here also grew up in Monroe County, Matt. Hey, there we go. What part? Peterstown. Uh, okay, okay. I lived in Linside for a hot minute. Well, we have a um, farm about a mile up past James Monroe, up Weichel Road. Oh. Okay, okay. I was on a, uh, oh my gosh, I think Pine, Pine Grove Road up in Linside. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, we're losing the audience. Just to catch up. You all, you, hey, you got the Monroe County <laughs> faction locked in right now. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, man. Uh, Zach, uh, tell us uh, your thoughts about what you see going on in Washington, D.C. right now regarding the continuing resolutions and the budgeting process between Democrats and Republicans. Well, you said there, there doesn't seem to be any, like I said, there doesn't seem to be any um, mention of what can actually help working class people often or not. It's always back and forth. It's always the same old arguments. And... We don't seem to have anything addressed, you know. Like, like I said yesterday, like for uh, for example, there always there's never seems to be money for the working person. There never seems to be money to help people out. But there's always seems to be money for when corporations need something. There always seems to be money when we need to fund a war, um, but never when it comes down to getting inside the communities and see what people actually need. We actually want better America. Mike Cornby, Matt, uh, sorry, Zach. Have you run for office before or served at a um, any local or uh, state level before? I have not. No, I have not. I have worked um, different campaigns in different capacities, right. but I have not served as a candidate, no. So I've, I've always elected. found that, you know, running for U.S. Senate, that's a pretty tall task uh, for Absolutely a statewide, yeah. statewide thing. How is the fundraising going? Because um, th- that's got to be a huge task for you. It's going, going pretty decent. 
going pretty decent actually. Um, we we've been fundraising ever since uh, we we launched, and then after uh, you after Mansion dropped out, the fundraising has definitely increased. <laughs> and what was the what was the reasoning for running for a statewide office, uh, instead of a local or uh, maybe a state state uh, you know like uh, sure. legislature or state senate so ultimately it's like ultimately i i really do believe that we can get um if running for this high of an office can amplify the voices of west virginians who need, their, who need to hear their problems concerned or heard so running this high gives me a better platform to be able to say hey this is what's going on in my state here's what we need to help with you know we need, we need actions on this and it also goes on to further appalachia and really the rest of america really the working class america that all has the same problems. You know, we're dealing with poverty on a massive scale. We're dealing with not not being able to afford, you know, gas, groceries, bills. So ultimately, it's a uh, yeah, it's a it's it's the power amplification. Uh, <clears throat> this is John Gilstrap. Good morning. Uh, so put some meat on the bones there. I, I'm, I've got an article up uh, about you here, and pretty much the, the same thing as what you're talking about here. People can't afford gas. They can't afford day, daycare and, and what have you. Stipulating that all of that is true for the sake of argument, how do you fix it? What are, what are some of the plans that you want to implement, implement if you win to to make things more affordable for, for, for poor people? And specifically, I guess, where does the money come from? So ultimately, um, I'm always in about um, we have to one. I think we should raise taxes on the rich, of course, the ultra rich to get to get that money back in there. We have to actually fight back on corporations that um, you know the greed, the greed of people that actively raise these prices. It's not all you know. Everyone likes to blame um, you know they'll blame Trump, they'll blame Biden. Now, in real reality, is companies choosing to raise their prices to so they can always make their profits, and it just hurts the poor person in general. So we have to fight against that, raise taxes, and then we also probably should allocate. Funding from uh, gut from funding from the government to uh, different sources to actually um, help people out. Ultimately, I mean, yeah, I mean, we have to cut the fat off some of these programs that spend excessively. You know, oftentimes you have the uh, the war machine, for instance. We always had money for war, we never have money for poor, for the poor. You know, so ultimately, it's a, like a twofold system. You have to rate, raise taxes in some areas, and at the same time, you have to allocate money from the government in different areas. Define rich for me. Uh, excessively rich, I would say, probably you know, once you reach up into the few millions, sure. Okay, and so these are the, I'm just, I'm just devil's advocating here, those are the people who em employ folks, they run companies, they have, uh, they produce products, and if we raise taxes, then we're going to see higher product, higher prices on products, and layoffs of or replacement of people with machinery that is is less expensive is is that how do you find that balance i guess i mean ultimately it, is, and it has to come down to is we have to we have to have a hard conversation about it you know the, the profit i mean yes is, is that a risk certainly but you have to have the t yet there has to be a time where we have to keep people employed and everything everything can just be raised for the sole sake of making making a buck um, and that's going to require long conversations, maybe, you know, maybe a cultural shift there. But I don't believe um, I don't believe people will ultimately just change automation like that. If you actually, if you actively are taking care of your employees, your employees are happy. You're putting people to work, and they have the ability to live, to stimulate the economy because they're not you know not, we're not choosing between bills. I think we'll, I think we'll see some payoff there. Matt Harvey, um, <clears throat> Zach, so. You've said you've worked on a lot of campaigns, and now you're a candidate yourself. Tell me what you've noticed is is uh, like a lot different <laughs> from working versus running yourself. <laughs> um, well, you get a uh, you get a lot of advice from people, <laughs> and um, you know when you're running the campaign, you're like, hey, that might be some pretty good advice. But when you're the candidate, you're like, mm, I don't know about that. So it's it's ultimately just um, it, it becomes more of a personal level, I guess, so to speak. Um, and it ultimately it's, yeah, it really is just for me, it's more personal now, you know, now actively and now it's me fighting for, for me now it's fighting for somebody. It's not, um, a random person I'm working for, a person I've got that I'm working for trying to get them elected. It's now myself. So West Virginia is, as, as you're well aware, is, is become ruby red and, mm. and is electorate. What, mm. what is your strategy to overcome that? Well, like I said before, my messaging is not is goes across party lines. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. 
at the end of the day, so many, so many West Virginians, let's be honest, we're all poor. We're all, most of us are one paycheck away from not making it. We're not one paycheck away from being rich. And I'm out here trying to amplify the problems, amplify um, issues in West Virginia, you know, to actually uh, uh, talk about the economic problems here. And I, in, a, in the day, I, I don't think, um, you know, I don't think it actually matters if you're a Republican or a Democrat. It matters if you actually have representation, especially in the federal government. It matters if your voice is being heard. And from what I've gathered, that's not happening. Zach, I have to disagree with you as to whether it matters to be a Democrat or Republican. In West Virginia, it absolutely does because of the popularity of Donald Trump. He's uh, at uh, 79%, I think, in this state right now. And that R means so much to people in West Virginia right now, just like it used to be a D 25 years Mm -hmm. ago. It doesn't matter if you got an R behind your name, there's a much better chance of getting elected. Did you think about running as a Republican? And if, if not, why not? No, I haven't. I haven't thought about running as a Republican. Um, most of my uh, most of my views go more towards the Democratic Party. But like I said, like, like I just said before, really it comes down to is has or have nots. I am a Democrat. Um, it, I, people love Trump here, and I'm, I, people love Trump here because Trump showed up and he listened to people here, and I believe that's what a lot of West Virginians want. People want. Um, someone who shows up and actively listens to them, and that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm in the communities across the state. I don't think, it, it, truly, I don't think it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're R or D next to your name. West Virginians want someone who cares, want someone who actually knows their problems, and someone that will fight for them. If it and does, that's what I'm trying to get But across. Zach, if it doesn't matter, then why is there a 31 to 3 ratio of Republicans to Democrats in the Senate and an 89 to 11 ratio in the House right now? Sure, because I mean, because also, cause, well, you have the you have re- Republicans on last year on last year on Trump, and then most Democrats, and I'll say it, they don't have my messaging. My messaging, like I said, it goes across party lines. I am pro working people. I am, you know, I, a lot of Democrats don't focus on that. They they focus on different subjects. Like I said, Trump Trump promised to throw a brick through the window of D.C. basically, and that's what got people um, fired up and. You know, obviously, of course, Republicans will attach themselves to that, and that's what people are wanting. They want someone. You know, West Virginians are tired of of being forgotten, and I'm trying to provide that and say, hey, you know, not all of us, not all of us on the Democrat side here, have forgotten about you. I'm actually fighting for you every day. But Zach, nobody runs on the anti-working people ticket, right? So it's it's one thing to be for them. It's it's what it, you show up. You listen, and all of that is wonderful. How does that translate to additional jobs and higher wages and, and that sort of thing, especially when you're sitting in Washington as opposed to sure. sitting in the legislature in West Virginia? Because you, well, because you actually have to fight for the higher wages in Washington, D.C. to get oh, say, our minimum wage raised, for instance. You have to be bringing their jobs here. One of my biggest things and is bringing um, manufacturing jobs to West Virginia in renewable energy and having a, and having a transition period um, for those workers. You have to protect the workers, but at the same time, bringing new manufacturing jobs here. I, I, I never see that being thoughtful. Why can't we build the new uh, the new energy here? So ultimately, yeah, well, I, make it here. Make the solar I, panels here. Make the windmills here. Zach, I'd, I'd push back a little bit on that because the, the local legislature actually passed and, and brought in a bunch of manufacturing jobs in this last uh, thing with economic development. But wh- form, what I will form energy, yeah, like green energy, by, right? by storing uh, storing energy from. Uh, but my question would be this: Let's say you win the Democratic nomination. Uh, I don't know how many people are running in that seat. How would you overcome running against Justice or Mooney, with the two most? Um, you know, one justice probably the, the most popular man in West Virginia, uh, sure. but Alex Mooney's probably got name recognition throughout the state. How would you overcome that? Well, I mean, ultimately, it does come down to um, do you see Jim Justice in these communities? Oh, who is Al- who is Alex Mooney in the day? You know, Alex Mooney is uh, what he served in the Republican legislature in Maryland, I believe, for 10, 20 years that he came to West Virginia. No one knows. No one knows who Alex Mooney is in this in the state outside of the Panhandle. And Jim Justice, I mean, he, he's not in touch with people here. He's not. You know, not none of none of us down here own boats, own the Greenbrier. No. I say from my conversations, Jim Justice is not as popular as people think he is. You know, pe- people people are down for new blood. People are down for new a new face. You know, a man that does, a man that can't pay his workers, come on. Ultimately, you know, you, you hone in on the messaging, 
I don't think Jim Justice or Alex Winnie are that strong candidates in the day. Zach Shrewsbury is our guest here. He's running for U.S. Senate, filed before Senator Joe Manchin decided to not seek re-election, and uh, he's uh, making his rounds across the state of West Virginia. Zach, let's talk about the labor movement right now in America. Each day it seems I get new news about another group that's going on strike for higher wages. Uh, the U- Auto Workers Union recently, we thought, had settled their strike, but now it seems that there are more votes amongst the working ranks against this settlement that was uh, purportedly reached uh, than uh, than we had expected. So maybe this strike is not coming to a close as fast as we thought. What messaging do you get from these strikes across the country from different industries? My God, look, I think it, it shows that, that this is the time of the economy and the country that people are fed up. People are fed up working low-wage jobs. They're fed up not having benefits. They're fed up basically just being taken advantage of. It, it, it comes down to where corporations get rich at the expense of the labor. And I see that as the messaging across the country. People are done. You know, People want to actually be able to live their lives, not make a horrible wage and have their family suffer from it. So I'm all, I'm all about it. Would you propose programs, for instance, that uh, I know Riley Moore, for instance, put together a, a program that we, I think he gave the, the name uh, the Blue Collar 529 program, uh, instead of saving for college, you're, you're saving money that you can use to purchase tools, uh, get an education that's more geared toward uh, a, a job that would be uh, more uh, in the lines of a labor job, uh, bricklayer, for instance, welder, uh, that sort of thing, HVAC technician. Would you propose legislation that would help to promote that sort of a choice after high school as opposed to trying to go to college? Sure. I mean, I'm always about tra- trade schools. Trade jobs are, of course, incredibly important in this nation. I mean, we, you know, we need trade. We need truck drivers um, across the, across the board. So, yeah, absolutely. We 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 should always be promote. We should promote both. Um, we should promote going to college, making it making an actual choice. You know, for people to actually want it, you have to be able to afford to live first and make that choice. But absolutely, anything that encourages trade skills in America, uh, yeah, absolutely. As a senator, you're going to be asked to vote on a variety of different things, including border issues, and that's a hot area right now. Your thoughts on the southern border at this time? Uh, the southern border is a complicated piece. Ultimately, given what's coming out of it, I think we do need to have more of a uh, probably some more compassionate stance on all the families coming across. I will speak on that. I mean, ultimately, you can't be separating kids and family members. Uh, you have the weird fence, the fence structures going up inside buildings where you're keeping kids um, in these fences. You know, I don't see why you can't expand upon that and keep families together. Um, and that goes it goes back. You know, it's not just a uh, you know not just a President Trump thing. It goes back to all the way to Obama. You know, it's it's been a it's, the border's been a problem for a while now. Um, but ultimately, you pro- we do need to start treating people with more compassion. Probably make probably look into seeing how people become citizens in this nation, seeing uh, what we need to adjust there, and actively be looking for just humane conditions. You served in the Marine Corps, so I know you have some opinions on this too. Would you vote for continued funding for Ukraine and also for funding for uh, Israel in the Middle East? Well, I'm pro peace. For instance, um, I do believe we need to actively look for ceasefires on both ends. Um, because all we're doing is watching people die consistently on both sides. Um, Ukraine absolutely has the right to, to defend its sovereignty. But at this point, um, the, the counteroffensive has seemed to have stalled. I've been saying that for a while. I think we, and just watching Russia from the areas it's taken is going to be incredibly challenging. Um, I don't see Ukraine doing that by itself without NATO intervention. So I think at this point we need to start pursuing some peace talks or some intervention, some type of ceasefire in that area. And same with Israel. I mean, you know, we have the bombings of Gaza consistently going on. I mean, you know, they're, they're at this point with uh, the way the protests are happening across the country, um, the more and more videos coming out. Like I said, in, in the day, I'm all, I need. I want to save lives. I don't think we should continually um, encouraging the wars. Cause I don't see what the end goal ultimately will be or if it will actually work to anyone's advantage matt harvey mr shrewsbury what are your uh views on guns your positions on gun control i'm perfectly fine with the guns i am ar-15s myself i think we should have more uh training available on on weapons um i think uh i think it benefits people to when we actually learn about guns early on 
that way, uh, you know, they're taught to be more of a, a tool than a, you know, a shiny thing that, um, you know, it's mysterious. Um, so I'm, I'm fine with guns. I have no problem with that. And ultimately, yeah, do I want background checks? Of course. Um, if you ever want to talk about gun control, I think we should expand mental health services uh, across the board to ensure um, people can get the help they can get. Now, I will say I'm not, a, I, I'm not, I'm not about campus carry. I wasn't. That was one thing I disagreed on. But in the day, what you want to keep in your home, if you want to keep AR-15s, AKs, I'm, I'm fine with it. I mean, I own them myself. I go shooting. Um, yeah, I learned the Marine Corps all about weapons. I, I wish more Americans were more open to um, having responsible gun ownership. Yeah. And your platform on on abortion? Yeah, in, in the day, I am pro-choice, pro-abortion. I have. I don't think um, anybody, the government has any ability to tell someone or a family should do in their lives. And that goes across the board for most issues. I don't believe um, it's your, you know, it's your opinion, my opinion, whoever else is listening, the, a senator's opinion has any say on what someone can do in their family. It doesn't come down to um, someone else's uh, viewpoint. It's bodily autonomy at the, at, at the end of the day. Mr. Gilstrap. Yeah, I want to get back to the, uh, the, the border issues. You talk about uh, we need to establish the means by which to achieve citizenship in the United States. And one might argue that we already have those laws in place. What we what we've never had before is sure. approved illegal um, immigration, for lack of a better term, or invasion through the through the southern border. So is the most is among the humane cures is that to establish either a, a, a literal or a figurative wall that slows this this flood of of people across the border who then just sort of enter into poverty here in the United States? No, I think we need, I think we need to uh, free more access to access for people. Um, that, that's what I want. I want if people want to come here, actively help them become citizens quicker, and then we can help identify areas that people can get into the workforce here. Um, ultimately, oh yeah, all, that's what I'm saying. Treat people with compassion. If people want to come here and find jobs and create different life, I'm uh, absolutely all for it. Um, while while people are getting processed at the border, you know, we can't be keeping. You know, we, we shouldn't be separating families. I, I don't. It, it doesn't make any sense. Why? Why that's the? Why that's the? Um, what is it? Why that's the uh, thing we have in place? There, it makes no sense to me. But like I said, if people want to come here and work, and if people want to come here and live, streamline access to get to the country. And then we can help people find jobs and get them to the fields that we need in this country. You know, I, I, help them become citizens, stimulates taxes, stimulates the economy. Who, who designed your Who designed your signs? Those are awesome. What's that? <laughs> who designed your campaign signs? I'm looking at one on. It's a, it looks like I'm driving over Highland Scenic Highway down at the Cranberry. That's pine trees and a aggressive bear. That's right, and I have I have a I have a. <laughs> Uh, graphic designer that designed that for me. I personally love it. Here. Come on, that, 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 I that, love that, it. That, I that think it's the best. That's a big fan. I think it's the biggest, the coolest sign I've ever. Hey seen. Zach, we're about out of time. How do people find out more about your campaign for U.S. Senate? Sure, you can go to shrewsburyforsenate.com. I'm also on every social media platform. You know, X, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok. Once I figure out TikTok, dot com is the best way. And um, or they can always reach out to me. All right, we're, we're starting to lose your cell. The, 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 we're not getting a great signal from wherever wherever you just moved to. But, Zach, thanks so much for being on the program. All right, thank you so much for having me on. Have a great day, Zach. Shrewsbury, candidate for U.S. Senate, U.S. Marine at uh, 9 o'clock.